In this amigurumi tutorial, I show you how to crochet a monarch butterfly. Hello lovely people and thank you for tuning in. I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe and like I said in this crochet tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet this monarch butterfly. And so thank you all very much for voting. Um, uh, you, if you've seen that, I had a poll video um, in which I just showed you different options. One was the butterfly, then there was a dragonfly and also a dachshund. It was just some of the um, options that I had given you a while back and I just wanted to first crochet all of them and then give you a choice. And all of them are going to be patterns. Like I explained in the other video, the dragonfly pattern is already completed. It's um, available for free on my blog and also available ad free um, for a small fee on Ribbler as well as on Etsy if you prefer the PDF. And yeah, so all those links are in the description box below. The dachshund will be a proper pattern as well. So those of you who voted for that one, um, yeah, I won't disappoint you. I will make a proper pattern for it as well. So you can still go ahead and crochet that one. Um, the poll results were very clear, which I'm glad about. So it left me with no doubt that it should be the butterfly that I'm showing you. Um, at the time of filming this, I think 58 people <laughs> voted for the butterfly and then I think 17 for the dachshund and 16 for the dragonfly. So we're definitely doing the butterfly for this video. And so, um, of course, I won't be using black yarn because it will just be impossible for you to see. And so I selected these colors. <laughs> so I call it the psychedelic butterfly. <laughs> I really like it so yeah this just goes to show you don't need to use realistic colors and um, if you never ever like working with black yarn you can still go ahead and crochet along with me and create a fantasy butterfly I mean why not so for this original version I actually used different yarn than I used in this tutorial but the size turned out the same anyway if this one looks smaller, it's just because it doesn't have legs yet. So this one is just closer to the lens. And so the size is, if you want to know, it has a wingspan of about 10 centimeters, around four inches. So if you would like to make your butterfly in the same size, then I recommend going for a 2.5 millimeter hook, which is something in between a size C2 and B1. Um, for most of you, I would say uh, C2 is fine, which is precisely, I think, a 2.75 millimeter hook. Only those of you who tend to crochet quite loosely, um, for you, I recommend going for the B1, which is, I think, closer to a 2.25 millimeter hook, or simply 2.5 millimeter if that's available where you are. And so. When it comes to yarn, so for this version, just if in case you want to know exactly which yarn I used, I actually used two different types of yarn. And so the orange part for the wings, for this one I used Rico Creative Rico Rumi Decay. And I can't remember the name of the color, it's like a rusty red or something. I'll write it in the description box in case you want to use the exact same one. But then for the black, I actually used Shapius Katona, which is even a slightly lighter yarn weight, but it all worked out nicely. And even though I used Shapius Katona for both parts of this butterfly, it, um, yeah, the size is the same. So it doesn't matter all that much what type of yarn you use you know sometimes i mix and match if i have the right colors the ones that i want then i just go for it and i don't really mind that much about 
having the same brand or something like that. So if you want your butterfly to be about this size, then I recommend going for a DK yarn or a four ply yarn. So Shapies Katona, which I used for this one, is a four ply yarn. And the Rico Creative Rikurumi DK, as the name suggests, is a DK yarn. And the American equivalent for DK is light worsted. Um, honestly, I'm not sure about four ply. It's just the um, weight that is a little bit lighter than um, light worsted. So I think it's sports weight. And then we need some embroidery floss. So oh, obviously for the butterfly, you would go for orange and black. And the embroidery floss should be white. As you can see here, now for my um, fantasy psychedelic <laughs> version, I use yellow to make it more funky, even more funky. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the white would have been nice, but I ran out of white and I really didn't want to delay this video. So we're going with yellow. And so other things you need, um, definitely you need a yarn needle. I really like those with the bent tip. Um, then we need a stitch marker and scissors. And we don't need any um, fiber fill or anything like that. But if you would like to add the details that I made with wire here, the legs and the antenna, I'm sorry about the airplane noise I have my window open because it's such a beautiful day so if you want to add those details you also need some craft craft wire so this one it's quite sturdy but not too difficult to bend um, I believe it's one millimeter let's double check that yeah it's less than one millimeter thick so maybe it's even 0 0.8 millimeter thickness um that's definitely enough oh sorry i just shook the camera there <laughs> and yeah you just need a little bit this will be more than enough and then what may be helpful is something to bend it although it's not necessary you can bend it using your fingers like i said it's not that difficult to bend uh, i just have these small flat pliers that i use for this kind of thing if you have them great you don't need to go and buy them, not essential. And something to cut the wire, but again, you could use household scissors. It's a, just a craft wire, it's not that difficult to cut through. So only if you have those already. And then you'll need some glue. So I just use super glue for this um, because I'm going to, uh, we are going to wrap yarn around the wire. Here for bending over these ends, the pliers are useful. And that's just what I'm going to mention. If you have them, to, uh, I encourage you to use them, but still you can, you know, bend it without and just find other ways to do it. And I think that's all the materials we need. And so I'm very excited to get started with this. Without further ado, let's get crocheting. So we get started with the wings. And so you need the main color, which would be orange if you're making the realistic monarch butterfly. So that's what we get started with. We first crochet the upper wings and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the intro. I recorded it twice so I may have um, forgotten it <laughs> in the end. Um, the other patterns, the dachshund and the dragonfly, they will be patterns as well. The dragonfly actually already is a finished and tested pattern that you can find for free on my website stellasyarnuniverse.com and also 
you can find a PDF on Etsy and an ad-free interactive pattern on Ribla. The, the ad-free versions are available to purchase for a small fee on either Etsy or Ribla. I really, really recommend Ribla because it's such a great platform. I can't mention it enough, <laughs> so I'll keep mentioning it. We start with making six single crochet in the magic ring. So one, two, three, four, five and six so then we close it i don't fully close it just yet that i usually never do that because that makes crocheting into the first stitch of round two easier um and so where are we here okay so we increase in the first stitch by the way excuse the look of my hands please i've been crocheting and creating so much recently and so yeah it shows and i thought it doesn't matter i just want to create this tutorial for you so then we single crochet in the next stitch and we repeat this three times so that we increase our six stitches to nine so in the next one we increase again and one single crochet in the next and increase in the next stitch here and single crochet in the last stitch so you could use a stitch marker here if you prefer. I don't use mine yet because it's still a small round. Now you can pull the yarn and really tie it to close the ring. But always be careful with this, especially if you're not using cotton yarn. If you're using acrylic that can sometimes rip easily. So be careful with that. So now round three and four. In those two rounds we simply single crochet in all nine stitches that we now have so just all around that was one two three by the way i should mention don't crochet too tightly if you crochet as tightly as i tend to do especially um try not to do it too tightly i mean you still want nice and neat stitches for your amigurumi of course but just be a bit mindful of it because later when we crochet around when we crochet the black silu silhouette then it will be difficult if the stitches are very tight um you may not all have this problem it's just something i'm dealing with <laughs> sometimes because I crochet very tightly uh, as you may have noticed watching me crochet so we'll see now I realize maybe I should have used a stitch marker <laughs> I think there's still one left and that should be it yes okay that's round three and then one more round in which we crochet in all single crochet in all nine stitches so one two three oops four Six, seven, eight, and nine. 
So that's round four done. In round five, we increase a little bit more. So we start with an increase in the first stitch. And then we single crochet in the next two. And then we increase in the next. And single crochet in the next two. And once more, increase in the next. And single crochet in the next two. So now we have a stitch count of 12. And that's round five done. So now in round six, we simply single crochet in all 12 stitches. So that's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And 12 by the way if I'm going too fast or slow you can always speed up or slow down the video um, if you click on the I think the settings icon underneath the video at least that's what it's like um, yeah if you're on a laptop or something um, maybe it's the same on mobile <laughs> Uh, but there's definitely an option to slow it down or speed it up if needed. Or if I'm talking too much, just mute me <laughs> because you have the instructions there. And turn on your favorite music. I really recommend that. <laughs> and so um, in round seven, we start with three increases in a row. So one increase. Another increase, so two single crochet in the same stitch. And a third increase. And that's it. Then we single crochet in one in each of the remaining nine stitches. Okay, that's it so that's round seven done now in round eight we continue increasing so we increase in the first stitch two single crochet in there and then we single crochet one here in the next stitch and we repeat this two more times three times all together one increase So two single crochet in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next and once more two single crochet in the next and one single crochet in the next so that's the increase part done and then again we single crochet in all remaining nine stitches of the round
and that's round eight done in round nine we continue increasing so once again we begin with an increase two single crochet in the first stitch and then we single crochet in the next two stitches one and two and once again we repeat this two more times increase one two and increase one two so that's all the increases for this round and the whole wing so now we just single crochet one in each of the remaining nine stitches that's two three four five six seven eight and nine and now in the next round we simply single crochet in all 21 stitches actually I could have started using the stitch marker I'll do it now just to make sure I don't do any miscalculations and so in round 10 simply single crochet in all 21 stitches of the round That's round 10 done. And so in round 11, we begin decreasing slightly. So first we start with five single crochet. One, two, three, four, five and then we decrease so that's an invisible decrease i have a tutorial for it if you're not familiar with it so we just go in the front loop the front loops of the next two stitches pick up the yarn pull it through them and pick up the yarn and pull it through the two remaining loops and we repeat all this two more times. So five single crochet. That's two, three, four, five. Decrease. One, two, three, four, five, and decrease. And so that's round 11 done. There we 
go. And so in round 12, we decrease further. So we start with a decrease this time. And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Then we decrease again. And single crochet in the next two. That's it. And we decrease again. And single crochet in the next two. And now we should have six stitches left in the round. So we just single crochet one in each of them. So this is round 12 done, round 13 is quite similar so we start again with a decrease Oops. and then we single crochet in the next stitch and we return decrease again single crochet in the next decrease again and single crochet in the next And now we have six stitches left in the round and we simply single crochet one in each of them. That's it, that's round 13. And so the decreasing de the decreasing continues in round 14 we make three decreases in a row so that's one That's two. And that's three. And now we single crochet in the remaining six stitches. That was two. Three, four, five, and six. And so now we only have one round to go. We're down to nine stitches now. And in the next round, we start with a single crochet in the first stitch. And then we decrease and we repeat this two more times so a single crochet in the next stitch and uh, decrease and 
and once more a single crochet in the next stitch and a decrease so that's the base of the wing done I'm stretching it a little bit you can already see the shape forming just flattening it so here there's one stitch you can see one stitch if we crochet into that we're going to crochet into that changing color to black and then we're going to crochet around the wing so it should naturally fall into this shape um, you can also flatten it after doing this color change before I just need to mention that the upper wings are both the base of the upper wings are both made the same way so you can later go back to the beginning of this part of the tutorial for crocheting the other wing but the next part in which we crochet around the wing that's different for the upper right wing and the upper left wing and so um yeah let's start with the upper right wing i'll show you both they are of course similar but um, if you want to crochet along with me i think it's best if i show you both so now we will need the black yarn or in my case the um i'm not sure is it teal i think it's teal and so We make one more single crochet in the next stitch here and with that we change color and that means we begin with the old color the orange or whichever color you may be using and we pull a loop through the stitch and then we join the new color which would be black if you're making the realistic monarch butterfly and then we pull the black yarn through the two loops of the orange yarn. Let's do that again. And there we go. So now if we pull everything tight, the old yarn and the new one, then we can see that we have a nice and neat color change here. And so these two yarn ends I'll just hold them first of all we don't need the orange anymore so I'll cut the orange short and then I can comfortably hold these yarn ends in my hand with my finger to hold them out of the way and so now we're going to use the black yarn or teal in my case to crochet around the wing and the way to do this for the the right upper wing is first of all this is the wing should be pressed flat and we should now be on the and uh, this side of it this um I can't think of the right word now <laughs> this side with the curve here and so we now start we kind of what we're doing is we crochet one stitch or increase depending on what we do into the side of each round and but we kind of place it in between rounds more because that's easier to catch a loop so what we're doing along this edge we're catching a loop in between rounds so I start gonna start with I'm going to start with this loop here or 
Yeah, the one that's most on the edge. It may also be the one further in the back. Maybe let's go for the one further in the back. So I'm just catching a loop there along the edge. And now I make a single crochet in here. So now we have this single crochet. And next I'm going to pull up a loop in between round two and three. This one was in between round one and four. Next, I'm going to pull a loop up in between round two and three here on this edge. So this one um, is already kind of peeking out. So I'm trying to catch this one. Oh, by the way, the next stitch is a half double crochet. Almost forgot. So first I do a yarn over. Then I'm catching the loop. And this is why it's good not to crochet too tightly for this project. Um, anyway, I mean, this is still <laughs> tight enough. You can see that all the stitches are like small and neat. And yeah, it's, it's anyway, it's quite, um, yeah, not the best thing to crochet too tightly. It's not really good. It doesn't feel good on the fingers. And so, here I now make a half double crochet. So here we have the half double crochet. And next I'll catch a loop in between round three and four. So somewhere here and along the edge. So I'm gonna go with this one. Oh, it's a half double crochet again. So, oh, there we go. Yarn over, then catch this loop along the edge and half double crochet. So now we have a single crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and we'll do one more half double crochet in between round four and five along the edge. So yarn over and then Catching a loop somewhere here. Maybe this one here further in the front. And another half double crochet. So if the loops that we catch along this edge, if they are further on this side, on the reverse side, then the stitches will obviously go further in the background and if they are further toward the front they will move more to the front and due to the nature of crochet it's very difficult to get them all exactly in one row so I wouldn't worry too much about it you can always balance it out if you notice now here for example now I'm quite far in the front so I just make sure that I don't go even further to the front with the next stitch so I wouldn't pick up this loop for the next stitch I would pick up the one behind it if that makes sense so always try to stay on this edge if you look at the wing from this angle and so in the next stitch we make a half double crochet increase and so we yarn over again and then pick up a loop in between the next two rows and in there we make two half double crochet So that's how it looks from the side. And then next we have another half double crochet increase. So yarn over, picking up one of these loops, maybe this one, and making two half double crochet. And then we have one more half double crochet increase. So yarn over, Picking up a loop along the edge and making two half double crochet in there. And this is how it looks so far. So now we have five double five half double crochet in a row down here. So here we do the next one. 
always in between rounds. So one stitch, whether it's, I mean, with stitch, I mean either one stitch or an increase, but one of each in between two rounds always. So that's one half double crochet, and then we have another. In the next spot, that's two. Then now I'm catching a loop here between the next two rounds. So if you crochet too tightly and this is tricky to catch a loop, this happened to me before, then you just try to catch a loop first with the yarn needle, just find it find the one you want, pull that out a bit and go through it all with the whole yarn needle to loosen it up a bit before you crochet in it. And then you can crochet in it. Oh, caught two loops there. Although I had this one so nicely prepared. <laughs> So let's pull it out again. Oh, there we go. That should be okay. So now we have one, two, three, four, one more half double crochet in between the next two rounds. That's it, so this is how it looks so far. And now we have another half double crochet increase in between the next two rounds here. Oh, yeah, here in the beginning I crocheted quite tightly, so this part is a bit more tricky. <laughs> This is how it looks. And now in the next one, we have a double crochet. So now we're actually, now here the rule changes a bit depending on how it looks for you. I already crocheted Oh well, I have one more to go. Let's do one more. And this is in between round one and two. So let's do the half double crochet. I'm just gonna catch a loop here in between round one and two. So that's it. And then half double crochet. And so Here, we just, um, we have another two stitches. I mean, one is another double crochet and the other is a double crochet increase. And then we'll have moved all around and we'll crochet all the way up. And so with this, it doesn't really matter where they go. It depends on what looks best. I mean, it would make sense to me to place it the way this looks now, to place it in the center of the magic ring, but sometimes I go here underneath. So it can all, yeah, it all depends on how your work looks. Let's see how it looks if we go here underneath the magic underneath round one instead of through the magic ring I just move this center of the magic ring a bit so that this makes sense with these stitches as you can see here um, it doesn't matter if they are a bit longer and they reach into the wing I mean that part is quite dark usually I think so that should be fine so the next double crochet I'll be making in here. Yeah, let's first try to go underneath round one. And here I come out of round in between round one and two. 
and here I'm in between round one and two, so I completely crochet around around round one. And that's what I did for the other wings and it worked. So let's see how that turns out. Just pick up the yarn and put it through. Which is a bit tricky. <laughs> there we go. So I hope it wasn't as tricky for you. Here I just crocheted quite tightly. So now we can make another double crochet. And then now we have two double crochet. One looks a bit longer because it's crocheted around the whole of round one. And that's absolutely fine. Next we have a double crochet increase. So in here I'll make a double crochet increase. So do two double crochet in the same spot. So yarn over. Now I'm going to go through here. And on the other side I'm coming out here. So I'm crocheting again around the complete round one. And here I make two double crochet in the same spot. So that's one and two. And so now we're moving in the other direction again. So here the next thing is we make another double crochet and it's actually an increase because we also we make one double crochet and one half double crochet in the same spot so i'm going to go for this spot here again another spot in between round um one and two this one here so yarn over catch a loop here and then double crochet and then half double crochet in the same spot. And that's it. So now we crochet around the tip of the wing. And this is how it looks. Don't worry if it's not exactly like this. Like this is kind of, you know, it doesn't matter that much. What matters is the end result and you can always fix little flaws something that you don't like about it um, later when we do the embroidery part so now we have 14 single crochet all the way to the base of the wing again and so now we go here in between round two and three we pick up a loop the same way we did before but on this side of the wing we do single crochet so pick up a loop and single crochet and move on to the next next spot in between two rounds and single crochet that's two three four Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, and thirteen 
so oh totally toward the right so this is yeah how it looks from the side we have 13 now so the 14th goes here actually properly into the side of the last round so i just um catch a loop here on the very corner just any loop really it doesn't really matter any loop kind of from the side of the round side of the stitch so now we have 14 here 14 single crochet and now we crochet through both layers of this last round and so since since the last round has six stitches if we crochet in two together on um, opposite sides we would end up with two stitches but uh, with three stitches sorry but actually two are enough like we only need two stitches to get from here to here and so in this stitch that I already kind of crocheted in I just go in there again but this time from the top and I also find the corresponding stitch here on the other side so I really need to go through both layers so there we go so yeah it's actually the next stitch that I went into so one I crocheted in from the side and then I went in the next stitch and the stitch on the opposite side so I've already worked in three stitches once this single crochet is done if you know what I mean so that's kind of why we don't need to make three single crochet here so pick up the yarn pull it through and single crochet and then I go through this next stitch here and also the corresponding stitch on the other side I hope you can see that um, yeah there it is so both stitches are on my hook let me get these yarn ends out of the way it's just important to crochet through both layers although not that important to be honest but just do it to be thorough <laughs> and close this wing here so another single crochet made and now we finish with a slip stitch in this first single crochet that we made here to crochet around the wing and now we crochet all around the upper right wing and here we need to leave a very long yarn and because we are going to use it to do this embroidery as well as have a long enough yarn and for sewing the wing on later on and so it should be at least 80 centimeters which I think are 32 inches just measuring with my hands And some extra just to be sure it's very annoying when you end up with <laughs> not enough yarn and yeah I always use the extra as stuffing for amigurumi um, so it's never wasted even if <laughs> I make them too long so we can pull this through now but let's do the embroidery part later so that you can first go back to the beginning of the tutorial to crochet the other wing I have already done that and then we'll make the left wing because that's just slightly different um, all the stitches are the same but we go the other way around and that's what I show you now so let's set the right wing aside 
and so once you crochet the second upper wing you again make the color change everything's the same there's one stitch kind of left here and it's on the edge of this curvy side of the wing so we just single crochet in there changing to black again so pick up the orange yarn mine is already fastened off orange or whichever color you're using and then join the black yarn or whichever color you're using you can also make a loop already i just pull the yarn through as it is and then just hold the two yarn ends together and here is our color change now for this one we go the other way around this is the left wing and so we make one chain and turn the wing and we start now with these two single crochet that go in um, both layers and both stitches from opposite sides we leave one stitch on each edge so one here and one here so we only need to make two that I could have explained it this way for the other way <laughs> that, that, this explanation makes more sense <laughs> so um, yeah, you don't need to go here in the next stitch just leave this one but in the next the second one just the one here that's on the side go through this one as well as the corresponding stitch and so you have two stitches on your hook now pick up the yarn pull it through and single crochet and then we go through the next stitch as well as the corresponding stitch let's see there we go and here we make another single crochet that's it so now we have our two single crochet to um, close this last round and next we have the 14 single crochet that go here along the edge in between rounds and so the same way we ended with the other wing we start now by just crocheting in this side of this last round so I just catch a loop somewhere here maybe this one to make another single crochet oh I had too many loops here yeah that's it now okay so that's the our first of 14 single crochet and now we just go again in between rounds so now I'm catching one loop here in between the last and before last round and so on so this is one two and like I explained with the other wing always try to catch the loop that's most on the edge if you look at it from this way and yeah you can see if the um, the stitch should be nicely framing the wing if you made one stitch and then you notice that it's too far toward the front or too far toward the back then you can always redo it let's see if this one's gonna go too far to the back no I think that's fine so one, two, three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight. Thirteen and fourteen. So that's the fourteen single crochet done. And now we have again, we're again at this tip of the wing where we crochet around the first, yeah, around the first round. So next we have a half double crochet and a double crochet both in the same stitch as an increase. So I'm just going to catch a loop here to do that, like a loop kind of in between round one and two. So yarn over and maybe I need again my yarn needle to loosen that up first. Okay, then one half double crochet and a double crochet in the same spot. And now next I go here right through the kind of the center of round one or in between round one and two. And that's where we make a double crochet increase. So two double crochet in the same spot. Oh, this, with this one I crocheted too tightly apparently. So I'm gonna go through here. Yeah, and then exiting here. So that's where I'll go through. That's it, and now I make two double crochet here in the same spot. That's it. So for the next stitch, the double crochet, I'm just going to pull out a loop here. I didn't like where I placed it, so I just undid it. So just know that you can always change your mind. So the first of the two double crochet, also with this wing, I put it yeah, in between round one and two. Oh no, this one still went around round one and then the other one around yeah, in between round one and two. So that's what we're doing with this one as well. So they are, it's not an increase, but they are so close together. So let's see if I can go through that loop or if I should find another one. <laughs> let's see. If this is the loop, you know, if it's too tricky, then maybe it's too far in the back. So I'm pulling out this one now that's closer to me. Yeah, that seems to work better. So one double crochet in here. And then one double crochet in between round one and two in here. 
also if all of this is doesn't make sense you can still you can just in here in between round one and two make another double crochet increase I mean these things don't matter so much you know you just look at it and see if there are any big gaps that you don't like you know you can always improvise it a bit just try to make it the same way <laughs> with the other wing and so here in between the next two rounds round two and three we had a half double crochet increase so in here I'll make two half double crochet that's it so now we work right nicely around this tip and now we have five half double crochet in a row so that's one I don't show you anymore I'm quite sure you know by now that I'm just catching any kind of loop but I, yeah, I try to just catch one loop, always. That's two. That's where we are now and here we have our three half double crochet increases so here in the next spot we make two half double crochet in the next one Ooh. no split the yarn that's not not what I want. That's better. Two half double crochet in here and one more half double crochet increase. One and two. Then we have three half double crochet in a row. much just want to catch one loop so that's the one and half double crochet another half double crochet and another half double crochet yeah so the last one went in between the last and before last round and then in here in this side kind of somewhere here in this gap wherever really we just make a single crochet yeah could be just in the same spot that we already have this one it really doesn't matter that much and then we finish with a slip stitch in this first single crochet that we made. Slip stitch in here. And that's the upper left wing almost done. We still have the embroidery part left, but the crochet part is done. And here again, we leave a long yarn and at least 80 centimeter or 32 inches I've been giving some extra Ooh. so that's it I think let's leave the embroidery part for later and first crochet the lower wings those are both equal, um, not when it comes to the embroidery, the, the embroidery is mirrored, of course, but 
and the crochet part is the same. Before we get to the embroidery part, we crochet the hind, hind wings and so we're using orange or I'm using pink but you can go ahead and use orange if you're making a monarch butterfly or just any color you like using for your butterfly and once again we start with a magic ring and so just use your preferred magic ring method make it nice and small and then we start with six single crochet in the magic ring and so one two three four five and six and so now we close the magic ring i don't close it very tightly just yet and then we increase in all six stitches just trying to get my hook in the first stitch and we have one increase in here that's one two three and four in the next five and six seven and eight in the next stitch nine and ten in the next and eleven and twelve in the next and so now you can fully close the magic ring so in round three we continue increasing and so we single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in the next and this we repeat five more times six times all together one single crochet in the next stitch one increase and one single crochet in the next, one increase, one single crochet, one increase, And so, yeah, just double checking that's the round complete. So now we have 18 stitches in our round. And so in round four, we simply single crochet in all 18 stitches. Seventeen and eighteen, so that's round four done, and now we can begin decreasing. So, in round five, we single crochet in the next four stitches one, two, three, four. Again, as a reminder, it's helpful not to crochet too tightly so that you can crochet in between the rounds later on with the black yarn and so once you have four single crochet then 
you make an invisible decrease and this we repeat two more times so one two three and four decrease that again. That's it and once more. One, two, three, four and decrease and so now our round has 15 stitches and so in the next round we just single crochet in all 15 stitches So that's round six done and now in round seven we decrease again so this time we single crochet in the first three stitches and decrease and repeat this two more times Once more, three single crochet and decrease. Oh, there we go. So, in the next round, we continue decreasing. This time, we start with two single crochet. And again, two single crochet and a decrease, and once more. Two single crochet and decrease and now we have one round to go and so by the way this yarn and can actually go inside since I already have these pliers I might as well use them for this <laughs> So one more round. In round eight, we single crochet one. And decrease. And we repeat this two more times. One single crochet and one D 
decrease without splitting the yarn <laughs> and one more single crochet and one decrease so that's the base of our hind leg and so next we change color to black or in my case green or well it's kind of like it's teal almost I think but almost more on the greenish side of teal <laughs> and so in the next single crochet we change to black in your case if you're making a monarch butterfly or most butterflies really they have like this beautiful black silhouette um, unless you don't like working with black which is very understandable so just start the single crochet in the old color and then simply join the new one you can make a little loop with a slip knot um, I just put it through without loop this time and then just pull the old color yarn close a tight <laughs> And now we'll, you can actually fasten this one off. And now we'll crochet around the hind wing. And we do this in the same way that we did with the um, fore wing. With the hind wings, it's actually easier so we just go here in the side of this last round that we just crocheted and pick up one loop i think that's one loop but anyway it's it looks fine so here we make a single crochet and then in between the next two rounds And yeah, the last, the next two from this perspective, we go in between those two rounds, pick up another loop, and make a single crochet. So we make six single crochet in a row. Now, this one was already quite far in the back, so now I'm trying to catch a loop that's closer to, um, that's more forward facing, if that makes sense. Let's see how that looks. The single crochet here, that's looking good. Otherwise it just, you go just go further back, further back until these stitches won't be visible from the front anymore. So another single crochet. Then I'll place another one here. So that's five now. And single crochet number six goes in here. And that's it for now when it comes to the single crochet. Next we have half double crochet increases. So before we catch our next loop here in between these two rounds we make a yarn over and then catch a loop here and make two half double crochet in the same spot and this we repeat four more times this is how it looks from from the top and now I'm gonna catch this loop here to make the second half double crochet and 
the next one goes here in the center of the magic ring so just go in there and in between round one and two uh, on the reverse side of the wing but from the front I'm going through the back loop two half double crochet in there and this is how it looks and then we go up the other side now so two half double crochet in here and two half double crochet in the next spot now and this time I'm coming too far forward I feel so I'm gonna go in here and yeah I'm gonna catch this loop that's not this one here in the front but this one in the back just to keep it balanced so that's one and another one so you can see this maybe you can see from this perspective from this angle that this stitch is a bit further further back now but um yeah it's better this way because now the stitch is going to come forward more and more with each round so now we have six single crochet to go and so now I'm catching this loop here one two three four five and let's see there we go and six so now um, as we did with the four legs we just crochet these four stitches here together so we leave this one the last round that consists of six stitches we leave this one on that side and the one on that side we just focus on the four that are opposite each other and so this here is just a regular stitch I'm gonna go in there and then also through the corresponding stitch on the other side like this and now we just single crochet them both together and that's it and we repeat this with the next stitch so this is just the next stitch of the last round that we made and I'll also go through this stitch on the opposite side here so now I have both stitches on my hook and just single crochet and as we did with the four rings we now make a slip stitch in this first black stitch that we made and now we also need a long yarn and for making the embroidery and for sewing um, so we go for 60 centimeters at least which is it's uh, 24 inches a little bit extra and that's it so when it comes to the hind legs they are both identical uh, up to this point the embroidery is different because um, you we want them to mirror each other but when it comes to the crochet part that's all the same there we go 
And so you can go back to whichever timestamp I put in the description box below. Just click on the timestamp for the hind legs and then you can make the second one. And after that, we'll go ahead and crochet the body. So for the body, we just start with a magic ring. Again. And we begin with a six single crochet in the magic ring. So now we can close that, not too tightly again. And so for the body, the first or the next rounds, round two to eight, so the next seven rounds, they're just six single crochet, one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So let's just do the first one together. That's two, three, four, five, and six. So, that's Two rounds done. Now you can pause the video and crochet six more rounds like this. Simply six single crochet. And once you're done with round eight, you can hit play once again and we continue with the rest. So once you have these all together eight rounds of six single crochet, then we can go ahead and start decreasing a little bit. Um, so we start with the, an invisible decrease. And then we make one single crochet. And one more decrease. I know that it's a bit tricky with such a small round, but you've got this. There we go. And one single crochet. Then the round is done and we only have a tiny round of four single crochet. So now for two rounds, we just single crochet in all four stitches, which makes eight. One. Two. three, oops, just one stitch, four, so that's one round done, one more to go, one, two, three and four and so now we can fasten off we don't need a long yarn and this yarn and from the magic ring we can um, start with this one actually Want to make sure yeah four stitches okay so now I'm just weaving in this yarn this yarn end that we have from the magic ring 
just with a few stitches. this one short and now we can close this little round here so we need our yarn needle again and we just go in the front loops of all these four stitches don't pull too tightly just yet just bring the yarn in through and once we have the fourth front loop we can pull it tight and now go through the center of the round here and simply weave in the yarn and so there we go One more and that's it so we can cut this short thank you so much for watching part one of my monarch butterfly crochet tutorial you can find part two linked here unless you're watching this on the day that it is released in which case you'll see the next part in the next couple of days on my youtube channel so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe so you'll get notified when part two is up see you over there happy crocheting